Hello there guys, what is going on? Sam and Chelsea back here again for my preview and team selector ahead of the game tomorrow night at Selhurst Park against Crystal Palace. This is a must-win game in the Premier League for Chelsea in the race for top four. I don't think you can put this and frame this in any other way, um, especially after that awful result and performance against West Brom last weekend. The fact that West Ham won against Wolves on Monday night, the fact that West Ham as well have got Leicester on Sunday. So a potential there for Chelsea uh, to gain on West Ham basically this weekend, which is essential at this point of the season. Um, I think there's been a little sort of revision in terms of where we sit in the top four race. Um, this is in Chelsea's control and it has been thanks to the brilliant work of Thomas Tuchel and his team in that unbeaten run uh, before the international break but from this point Chelsea should be getting top four it's not mission impossible Chelsea have it in their own hands and we need to get back to winning ways tomorrow it's just about getting the job done now I think those elegant wonderful expressive performances I think will be few and far between uh, from now to the end of the season I think it's just about getting the job done, done now for Chelsea in the race of the top four so hopefully we can get back on track tomorrow because if we don't really dangerous um, territory Chelsea are getting themselves into not only with what West Ham are doing competing for that spot but also the likes of Spurs who've gained some confidence recently um, Everton Liverpool of course too got a big win against Arsenal last weekend so Chelsea simply have to win this game it's three points if we don't get three points then it's really concerning in the race for the top four in, in the Premier League it absolutely is going to give you team news also my lineup looking at Crystal Palace and my prediction for the game but before we get into any of that good stuff I want to ask you guys if you haven't already hit that subscribe button and a notification bell so you never miss an upload or set the like button if you're enjoying the content because it helps out the channel as well so team news finally got it out of thomas tuckle finally got the right question fully fit squad so no new injury concerns after wednesday's victory against porto which is good for what is a ridiculously congested schedule for chelsea um, i don't think even i contemplated how intense this next few weeks are going to be like two weeks so of course this week we've got uh we've had porto on wednesday the first leg but then we've got crystal palace tomorrow then on tuesday it's back to sevilla to face uh, porto again in the second leg then after that, it's the Man City semi-final in the FA Cup. And I believe after the FA Cup semi-final on the Tuesday, it's uh, Brighton at home. So the game that got moved because of the Man City semi-final. And then after that, it's that massive game against West Ham. It is back to back to back to back. And I think in terms of Chelsea's squad and the strength of our squad, it should come through now for Chelsea. But it also means the amount of rotation Tuchel does has to be spot on. You know, players who do come in have to perform well because we're at this point of the season where, you know, we, we can't make any big mistakes, because especially in the Premier League, as I've just uh, detailed, because it, it could be fatal in our hopes for Champions League football. But... Let's look at some of the comments that Tuchel made, um, specifically about Tammy Abraham. I want to speak about this because there's been a lot of talk about Tammy recently. He's fit now. He's back in the squad. He was on the bench against uh, Porto on Wednesday. Didn't come off the bench. Not a massive surprise, to be honest. Um, Tuchel's comments about Tammy, and I think it was one of the first questions he was asked uh, during his press conference, were quite concerning to me, I think, for the future of Tammy Abraham. And it's not that surprising. But Tuchel compared his situation to Kepa. And I felt that was quite concerning because we're not really dealing with the same player here. You know, Kepa, Riza Balaga, we expect to be moving away, you know, isn't the first choice, shouldn't be the first choice goalkeeper. And, you know, you feel like Kepa is barely going to play any games. I don't even think he'll play against Man City next weekend. I'll be very shocked if he does. I think Mendy will play a majority, basically all of the, the games uh, for the rest of the season, I think, for me, in, in, unless he gets injured or suspended because he is the first choice goalkeeper. Tammy Abraham is Chelsea's top goal scorer this season. He still is. He hasn't started a game since the 20th of February. Um, and my thing with, with Tammy, as I've outlined countless times on this channel, that I just think that every time that uh, attack, in particular Timo Werner, doesn't score, doesn't perform well, I think any of the other attackers who aren't playing, who aren't getting opportunities, do have a right to moan or do have a right to say, why can't we be playing? And the fatal flaw to any anti-Tammy argument or saying that Tammy isn't good enough for Chelsea is the fact that he's our top goal scorer. If Timo Werner was banging in goals, if Kai Havertz was, if anyone else was really taking up that sort of uh, responsibility over from Tammy and saying, I'm the big striker here, no one has this season. As long as that goes on, I think Tammy and as well someone like myself will be justifiably annoyed why Tammy isn't getting more opportunities. But I just think it feels more and more that Tammy Abraham won't be here next season. And I think for his own career, if he keeps on being left out, not even getting off the bench, not getting a look in, whilst the likes of Timo Werner get bundles of opportunities and don't score goals, 
if I'm Tammy, I'm looking elsewhere personally. I just think for my own career because it, it looks like just for some reason Tuchel doesn't fancy him. And, you know, that's Tuchel's decision. And Tuchel's got a lot of decisions right so far. Chelsea are predominantly getting great results uh, under him. So you can't moan on that side. I'm just saying, I think for Tammy Abraham, I do think there is a strong argument for him to get some more opportunities because I think the current attackers aren't exactly flourishing and taking their opportunities that they get more so than Tammy Abraham. But let's take a look at the opposition. Crystal Palace sit 12th in the Premier League. Very comfortable once again. Fully expected. I felt they would stay up maybe a little bit lower I think for my Premier League predictions at the start of the year I think the fact in a pandemic year that a club like Crystal Palace is still safely in the Premier League I think for the ninth year either this is the ninth year or next year will be the, the ninth year for them in the Premier League uh, Wilfred Zaha of course is their biggest goal scoring threat not quite to the levels he was before um, of course all those links in recent years uh, him going to Chelsea I think that move and that big move for Zaha has passed now I, I do I think that he could have made that move move a few years ago and I just think there have been better attackers on the market that clubs have gone in for and filled the position like you know Chelsea spent money on Hakim Ziyech at right wing we've spent money on Christian Pulisic you know I, I think that there are other clubs too in and around the top six that could have bought Zaha and that's never really materialized but you look at their last five free draws that's a majority quite a few goalless draws they don't score a lot of goals Crystal Palace under Roy Hodgson uh, recently the 4-4-2 formation Michi Batshuayi of course on loan from Chelsea to Crystal Palace doing Chelsea a favor by getting that late equal at Goodison Park in uh, Crystal Palace's last game but of course Michi can't play in this game so I expect something like the 4-4-2 Eze and Zaha are probably the two most exciting players for Crystal Palace this season they don't have a ton of pace on the break which it can be a help for Chelsea if we are to dominate possession but Eze is one of those players that does excite me just in terms of his flair I think the way he goes on the pitch and looks to express himself and I think it is one player Chelsea should be looking out for and of course Wilfred Zaha on his day can be an electric player we haven't seen that consistently this year as I was just detailing but those are the two players I'd be looking out for and I think that set piece opportunities will be the big thing for Crystal Palace in this game especially with Gary Cahill great to see Gary Cahill back on the pitch he's had a decent season for Crystal Palace this year of course fond memories for Gary Cahill lots of love for Gary Cahill it's a bit of a shame that fans aren't in attendance because I think you know Chelsea fans would be showing a lot of appreciation for Gary Cahill for what he'd done for Chelsea and I think at times even not of course this current Gary Cahill but I think that uh, Cahill when he was at Chelsea great servant great defender I think at times we miss his level of performance but uh, Gary Cahill absolutely will be playing tomorrow and I fully expect a low block I fully expect this game to take the course of the first game against Crystal Palace way back I think in what was it October September time early in the season uh, where we won 4-0 the first half was quite dull but it took Chelsea to finally get that first goal and, and the goal started raining in so I think that that will be the course of this game again unless anything strange happens I think Chelsea will dominate the game it's about Chelsea breaking down a low block as we you know are very much confronted with on a regular basis and, and Chelsea's ability or sometimes inability to break down that low block that can be a concern I just want to say before I go into my predicted lineups once again I'm giving you two lineups today that I think may start tomorrow Kante Ingolo Kante of course came off the bench on uh, Wednesday we didn't expect him to feature in that game um, just wondering how he's managed because I don't expect him and I don't think he should be playing three games in a row he has only just returned does he start this game does he not start the midweek game against Porto? The fact we're 2 0 up, but in that game, I'd like N'Golo Kante if we're going to play on the counter a little bit more. It's a big Champions League game, but then right after that, you've got the Man City semi final, which of course you want Kante in as well. Big Premier League games after that. So it, I think it's about managing Kante quite well. Um, I have seen a theory that Kante may play this game, not start on a Tuesday against Porto in the second leg and then start against uh, Man City, all things being well uh, in the FA Cup semi-final. I'd probably go f towards that. I still think that you should be managing Kante a little bit more cautiously. So I don't predict him to start tomorrow, but I think he may come off the bench and play a large period of the game. Potentially, that's the way Tuchel may manage it. But you have to be really cautious, I think, with Kante because he's so vital to our midfield. And if he gets injured again, that may be his season over. So we really don't want that in key weeks of our Premier League and also Champions League and FA Cup season. It's, it's quite clear. But let's look at my two lineups. The first one here, Mendy, Dave, Christensen, Rudiger, James, 
Williams, Jorginho, Kovacic, Alonso, Mount, hudson Adoy, and one of Giroud or Tammy. So no Thiago Silva. So I think that the, the back three that started in midweek, I'd be very happy to see it start again here. I think that you could bring back Thiago Silva for that game against Porto in midweek just to get him that fitness once again. Hasn't played a ton of football. And I think if he wasn't suspended for this game, I think he would have started it absolutely. Um, but I, I, that's the best back three for Chelsea currently. Reese James performed wonderfully in midweek. He really did. And I think he's really asserted himself as Chelsea's first choice right wing back in the system. Georgie Cover as the double six. I'd like to see Gilmore be given a chance here, but he simply hasn't so far in the Premier League under Thomas Tuchel. Um, so I, I still think it will be Georgie and Cover as the as the main double six once again. Marcus Alonso, I just think Ben Shearwell has been brilliant. Um, once again, this is a big game. You know, could you bring back Marcus Alonso? for the midweek game against Porto, but Ben played so well, of course, scored the goal against Porto in, in midweek. So maybe I'm saving Ben for the game against uh, Porto, but this is such a key Premier League game. It's difficult because in terms of performance level, I don't think there's a debate here. I think it is Ben Shearwell. He's the first choice uh, for me, but I just think there is that concern about once again, rotation, having players fresh for these big games. So maybe Alonso comes back in here once again. And then we look at that front three where it's always up for debate for me. Uh, it's Mason Mounts, obviously going to be one of these players. And then it's the other two, and you can make a debate for any of them really in a moment. I'd like to see Callum hudson Doy get a start once again at left wing. Um, I I feel really confused once again by the management of, of Callum hudson Doy um, in terms of him being what seemed like a big player for Tuchel in the, in the early weeks of his reign at Chelsea. He's very slowly and well, actually quite quickly been phased out of the team um, completely. He isn't even getting off the bench now. Of course, he started at right wing back against uh, Sheffield United, didn't have the best game. But I want to see him pressed up the pitch now a lot more because I think that's where he can actually impact the game. And I think he really impressed me when he when he played at left wing against Everton. I think he had a really good game and i just like to see him start there. And as well, Giroud and Tammy, I, I think it's, you know, between those two, if, if one of these players are going to be given a start, I think it's way more likely Olivier Giroud who came off the bench in midweek is going to start start this game rather than Tammy Abraham but both of those players have struggled for starts recently so I think it's unlikely either of them in particular Tammy starts but I just think once again we don't have a clear goal scorer at the moment those two are doing a lot better than uh, Timo Werner this season so I'd prefer to go for one of those two uh, tomorrow night but I think that's more unlikely my second lineup as you can see the bulk of the team other than that front three is very uh, similar Mendy, Dave, Christensen, Rudiger, James, Georgie, Cover, Alonso we get into the front three which I completely changed so other than Mason Mount, just once again, Mason, in terms of fitness levels, maybe wanting to rest Mason, but I, I prefer not to do that. But I wouldn't be too stunned if Ziyech, Werner, maybe Pulisic as well, Havertz is the front three. Um, Werner just seems to get constant chances at the moment. Um, I don't think he deserves it. I don't think based on his performance level and actual impact in the game, we aren't playing to his strengths. He's not playing well. Um, and I actually think it's putting more pressure on him every time we play him. I actually think in a game of this nature, as I say, against a low block, I actually think it may be better to play someone like Pulisic, for instance, if you want. Callum hudson doy better one-on-one -on -one players, off-the-ball players um, that I think can drop a little bit deeper, have better dribbling ability to find a ball to their feet, which Timo Werner can't do to a decent enough level. And then maybe bring Timo on later on later on in the game when space opens up and we can play on the break a little bit more if we're controlling the game and, and the game goes in that direction. I just don't think uh, Timo, for me, deserves a start in this game. Hakim Ziyech didn't feature at all on Wednesday so he could be completely fresh um, but I don't think Ziyech um, that impressed me that much even though he didn't have a ton of time against West Brom did play well pre the international break so he could come back in here creatively for Chelsea and uh, Kai Havertz I think there's been some harsh criticism of Kai after Wednesday's game um, I think he's actually been playing pretty good recently I think he was completely isolated on Wednesday I don't think it's the same situation to Timo Werner um, but once again as I've demonstrated I think there are several attackers who are not playing consistently at the moment that could argue I could be in this team and do a better job because neither Kyle or Timo are really shining at the moment really taking a claim that they should be guaranteed starters at the moment the only one of that attacking free for me on a consistent basis that should be a starter is Mason Mount because he's Chelsea's best player he just is you know he impacts games he's the one that you trust week in week out to perform consistently in terms of the performance level the work rate but also the end product as we saw on Wednesday against Porto so those are my two lineups let me know yours in the comments below I think the way Tuchel managed 
challenges, these games coming up is going to be so intriguing. He has to get it right. Chelsea have to get the three points tomorrow night. No excuses if we don't. I think our uh, chances for top four is, is really dangerous. It is. So Chelsea have to get it spot on tomorrow at Selhurst Park. Let's hope they do. Thank you guys for watching this preview. If you did enjoy it, hit that subscribe button and a notification bell so you never miss an upload. Follow me on Twitter at Son of Chelsea and I'll see you again. Thank you.